My name is Jeff Roberts. I'm the Senior Director of Mission Management here at Spaceflight. That means I run the mission management team. I've been with Spaceflight for five years now. I launched the Spaceflight's first microsatellite back in 2016 on a PSLV mission. I ran the SSOA mission, launching 64 satellites about two years ago. And most recently, they did a SpaceX Starlink launch, launching a two black sky global spacecraft this past summer. So I'm here today to tell you a little bit about our Sherpa Next Generation program. So the Sherpa Next Generation is the following what we've done with the Sherpa missions in the past. As you may be aware of, we started Sherpa back in 2014 with a program to launch a whole bunch of CubeSats on a, uh, on a uh, ESPA class ring. But unfortunately, that program was canceled in 2018. We then on SSOA launched uh, two Sherpas, an upper free flyer and a lower free flyer, which separated a bunch of spacecraft and provided confirmation telemetry to our customers. So now we're building upon that with our Sherpa Next Generation program. This is the basic uh, chassis of all the Sherpa variants. It's an aluminum hexagonal uh, shape. So on uh, the base, we have a 24-inch interface, so that makes it compatible with the SpaceX rideshare port. It makes it compatible with the SpaceX Starlink rideshare port, and compatible on U.S. government missions that fly at Espa Grande. Then on the outside here, we have six hexagonal ports, I mean, sorry, six um, uh, radial ports on the hexagonal faces. And this can uh, accommodate a variety of separation systems. So over here, we have the eight-inch motorized light band, the PSLP uh, CubeSat deployer, and the Quad Pack CubeSat deployer. And all three of these are compatible with these plates. In fact, on, on the uh, Reicher mission we're doing in two months, we're flying three of the eight inch motorized light bands for our microsatellite customer Hawkeye, and three of the Quad Pack type uh, dispensers. Now on the forward face here, this is our forward port and it gives us a lot of flexibility. We generally reserve this port for our largest customer. It can accommodate microsatellites to about 100 kilograms. Uh, there's another 24 inch interface here. We often neck that down to a 15 inch or an 11 inch depending on what the, is compatible with the spacecraft. We can do other things with this forward port. We can uh, put a, an adapter to mount more CubeSat dispensers. We can put a mount that has uh, solar panels to power our electrical propulsion element, or we can even stack Sherpas up if we need to. So a lot of uh, this forward port gives us a lot of flexibility. So on the forward port, there's also going to be a plate, and on the bottom of the plate is going to be our uh, avionics system. We call this the rapidly reconfigurable avionics, or R2A. And the name uh, describes its functionality. It can be uh, configured to send deployment signals to any of these separation systems that we have. Uh, it can be reconfigured for a new sequence within minutes. And it has 16 redundant deployment channels. So it can send 16 of these separation signals. We'll be using uh, 14 of those on the upcoming rideshare mission uh, this December. 